two substances. One is called Tongat Ali. Oh, yeah. Which that is, stuff's real, huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because the, what happens is the testosterone molecule, it, it's basically carried in a cargo. Cut to the chase, evidence-based. Pull up a chair, let's get this straight. Peptide buddy, he's your peptide buddy. Fadosia agrestis and Tonkit Ali. I'm sure many of you have heard of these two supplements, maybe even tried them yourself. I'm also aware that these aren't peptides and I'm peptide buddy, so today I'm just going to be your buddy. This isn't one of the typical deep dives we take on these different peptides, but I do think we can take our approach to peptides and similarly channel it onto these two compounds because... One, they're talked about popularly in the same context of human optimization. And two, I think we can look at them strictly through what research says, which in popular media isn't always the case. I do think many people are introduced to this space by a well-spoken yet controversial scientist slash human optimization liaison guru of sorts, Dr. Andrew Huberman. I know I was. So... We'll take a look at what he says, and we'll get into our own thoughts about the claims that these two compounds are essentially testosterone augmenters. They're these plant compounds like Tonga Ali, and another one which is very interesting, it's a Nigerian shrub called Fadogia agrestis, and it mimics luteinizing hormone, which is the hormone that comes out of the hypothalamus that stimulates the testes if you got those and the ovaries if you've got those to make more testosterone or estrogen. So you don't want all your testosterone free. You want some of it bound up so that it can be delivered to the different tissues, including your brain. But if you have too much sex hormone bonding globulin, the testosterone can't really do its things. Okay. So Tonga Ali, about 400 milligrams per day, has the effect of raising free testosterone and overall testosterone by about 100 to 200 points. I'm going to start off by saying that there is no evidence, peer-reviewed or otherwise, that Fedosia agrestis mimics luteinizing hormone, except for claims Andrew Huberman makes on his website. Glad we got that out of the way. Okay, so Fedosia agrestis, aka Schweinfexjern, is named for German botanist George August Schweinfurth, who conducted extensive exploration throughout Africa. And I'm bound to mispronounce this, but it's one of many von Gurier flowering plants, and in particular is thought to be an aphrodisiac. Now, despite all we hear about Fedosia agrestis, when we're talking about preclinical and clinical data, there isn't much out there, which is surprising to me at least, given the amount I've heard about it on the Joe Rogan Experience, Huberman Lab, and other podcasts hosted by those who take pride in their testosterone levels of all things. A lot of what spurred the discussion on Fedosia appears to be through its role in Nigerian folklore. And I get it, there has been some data in rats that shows its touted aphrodisiac effects may be through in part at least modulating blood testosterone concentrations. However, this claim hasn't been replicated, it is only present in one preclinical study in the Asian Journal of Andrology in 2005, and in general hasn't been confirmed by research. Otherwise, it's only been shown in rats to increase different components of testicular function, but otherwise there doesn't exist data to support its popular claims as a natural tea booster. Like literally, those two pieces we've cited, that's it. However, I do admit that anecdote certainly in some instances, as it has throughout history, characterizes it as an enhancer of sexual excitement, which isn't to be ignored, but Take with that what you will. Now, Tonkit Ali is a different story. This, unlike Fedosia, has a more substantial presence in the literature. Tonkit Ali, Tonkat Ali, is also known as Uricoma longifolia. It is a tall, slender, shrubby tree with geographical predominance in Southeast Asia, and a lot of its roots lie in Malaysia, where it's been used for purported purposes of sexual enhancement as an antipyretic, so fever reducer, antimalarial, antibacterial, and even as an antihyperglycemic drug, hence why it's sometimes referred to as a Malaysia ginseng. Now, the purpose of this video is to address whether or not these claims that it's a testosterone augmenting aphrodisiac is supported by research, in particular the idea that it influences the release and or presence of testosterone. And if you're still watching, by the way, hit that like and subscribe button to see more of these fun-loving evidence-based videos. Now, I recognize the plant-based compounds use in traditional cultural medicinal practices, and truth be told, I wouldn't try to neglect that relevance. I recognize that long-standing socio-cultural roots oftentimes physically and psychologically bind and help members of society. 
so the lens we're looking through is less critical of the relevance these supplements have on generational cultural values, but rather their relevance in the scientific optimization community that oftentimes borders on, for lack of other words, bro science. But thankfully, we've actually got some preclinical and clinical data inspired by Tonkit. It's theorized to decrease features of infertility via suppression of expression of alpha-2-HS glycoprotein, a mechanism that remains unproven but was noticeably decreased in rodents after use of the compound, which essentially prompted this idea. However, when the major quasinoid present in Tonkin Ali was administered to rats as well, testosterone production appeared to be augmented through preventing conversion of testosterone to estrogen, acting as an aromatase inhibitor of sorts, though this idea is also controversial. And alternatively, other researchers feel that the relationship between Tonkin Ali and testosterone is influenced by decreasing binding of testosterone to SHBG, which is sex hormone binding globulin, which would thereby increase the presence of free testosterone. So there are many different ideas on how the product actually works, and none of them are particularly proven or even set in stone. As such, a clinical trial out of Malaysia looked at use of freeze-dried water-extracted Tonkin Ali root in a study on 109 healthy married men ages 30 to 55 over a span of 12 weeks. Now, what were the findings? First, the compound appeared to be generally well-tolerated. Also, there appeared to be no noticeable differences in fat mass among the two groups. Self-reported libido in the Tonkin group increased from week 6 to 12 and in general showed a greater increase in reported sexual satisfaction. The population of subjects who received seminal fluid analysis significantly decreased, which makes it a confounder. The Tonkin group appeared to have a greater increase in seminal fluid volume and increases in motility greatest in those with lower baseline values. However, it didn't seem to alter total and free testosterone levels. These findings are inconsistent among different trials. For instance, one evaluation showed that people with baseline low testosterone levels had increased testosterone levels after treatment, and another echoed these results in aging males with androgen deficiency. However, when taking a closer look at these results, an interesting literature review that came out of Cape Town, South Africa, dissected the confounding variables and components of bias, which essentially indicated that the only piece without any significant barriers to understanding showed pretty unchanged results when the Tonkin group was compared to placebo. As in, the results of these trials, which oftentimes contain some sort of bias, are consistently inconsistent. And so at this point, when it comes to Tonkat Ali as a tool to increase testosterone, even recognizing the significant limitations at play, the most positive approach would be to state that if it shows promise, it would likely be in the context of hypogonadism, when people are already suffering from low testosterone. That said, in these studies, the designs, dosages used, and target populations were different. These studies were conducted in a heterogeneous sample of populations, which makes generalized the results and clarifying them that much harder. When compared to Fedoja, yes, research is a lot more abundant and a lot more convincing. Moreover, Fedoja really hasn't been tested in humans, so notwithstanding anecdote, claims that it's a healthy alternative and surefire way to boost testosterone is simply put not based in research. So although I wouldn't say it's 100% BS, it's also statistically speaking untrue. I think the obvious and somewhat surprising finding given the amount we hear about both of these compounds is that Tonkin Ali is, in my opinion, more promising as a testosterone augmenting agent rather than Fedoja, most promisingly in the context of hypogonadism per the research at this point. However, systematic reviews accurately suggest that while there exists this intriguing, growing body of evidence, larger, well-designed trials are necessary to really confirm these findings and limit the variables at play that put previous findings into question. Because for every study that shows promise, there appears to be another one with fewer limitations that may demonstrate the opposite. So in a nutshell, both are interesting. Anecdotally, I know Know people have experienced good things and bad things with both. Some people have had significant changes in libido, maybe even measured testosterone values that are altered. I'm sure there are other components at play. But what I can say is that when comparing them side by side, Tonkat Ali 
is significantly more researched and particularly in the realm of hypogonadism exhibits the most promise. However, the confidence with which we could say that it's promising and will make a difference is at this point up in the air. So this is just my take on the two different supplements. I hope you enjoyed the video. I know it was a little bit different than what we typically do. If you do want to see peptide-based content, give us a like and subscribe. The details of the Patreon will be in the description below. And most importantly, I hope you have a great day. Take care. Cut to the chase, evidence-based. Pull up a chair, let's get this straight. Peptide buddy, he's your peptide buddy.